Furiosa! We've come too far. G'day, welcome back. So I hope you're doing well and having a fantastic day. Let's look at how we can do that technique from Mad Max Furiosa or Furiosa Mad Max, however you want to say it. So I have some footage here and this is me hanging out in my backyard. This is a tomato, spoiler alert. It's not a peach, which I think is a peach in the film. And this is my housemate hanging out with her tomato and she's pretending to pull it off the bush. I think mine is a little worse than hers. Anyway, so today we're gonna to look at doing that effect with the magic mask tool. The magic mask tool is down here. So it is a box within a box with a little person hanging out inside, which is another weird Da Vinci Resolve icon, which seems to enjoy having weird icons. So in this little node here, we're gonna to go to our start of our frame. And to make your selection, you wanna have your qualifier selected. So if your qualifier is not showing up, really simple, come down here, click this little arrow, and then just click on qualifier. Next step, we will just make a selection with our qualifier. Now to see the selection we just made, you can either come up to, I think it's here, highlight, highlight, or shift H. Now we have a really good selection straight away, but we have a little bit of a patch here. There's a couple of different ways we could do this. We could go and put a power window around our little tomato here and track that, or we can simply try and isolate this tomato a bit more. Or we can deselect that area by coming down to our qualifier with our little negative sign here. So a negative qualifier. This qualifier has bad attitude. So just make a little mark here. Now we have a nice selection going on. And if you wanted to, you could blur it out a little bit and just try and finesse it as much as you want. Of course, the more effort you put in, the better selection you will get, but let's just call this good for now. So if we were to play this footage forward now, it's not actually going to work with that effect because we need to track it. So come down here to this little arrow and just click this little arrow here, and it's gonna track that tomato for us. Looks like we have a pretty good selection, a little bit hiccupy, but not too bad. Let's just bring it all the way back. Now pressing Shift H, or of course you can come up to these three little dots, highlight, highlight, but we'll use some shortcuts today. Now, of course, the next step is to put that desaturation into our image, but we have a slight problem. If we come down to this little power primary color wheels here and we go to saturation, bring it down, we're only taking the saturation out of our friend, the tomato, not our enemy, the leaves. So what we can do, is we can put our saturation back on. You don't need to, but I thought I'd do that as a demonstration. Come back to your magic mask here, then come down to here, which is again, a circle inside of a box. And again, Resolve has funny icons and just click this and that will invert our selection here. Normally, if you wanted to invert your selection with the power window, you'll be using our outside node. But luckily for us, the old magic mask has a handy little invert button here. So now what we can do is go back to our primaries here and just come down to saturation and take it off. Now, if we play our footage back and forth, we have a really <laughs> great selection. I was really surprised that Magic Mask did such a good job the first time I did it. Now for the final step and the most interesting part of this effect, we are gonna add that saturation back in to our image and we're gonna do it using keyframes. Now it does sound complicated at the start, but I assure you it's actually really, really easy. If we were to look at our image here, we can say that we'll add the saturation in around here. Time it gets to here, we'll be fully saturated. Let's go back to that spot. So around about here, it looks pretty good. Now we're in corrector number nine, and this is really important. So come down to your little button here, which is keyframe. So keyframe look like they're blurred together or something. Corrector number nine, Corrector number nine. So these two are hanging out together. So we're gonna to expand it just by clicking this little arrow here. The way we're gonna achieve this effect, we're gonna use our node key down here. The node key, strangely enough, lives under the defocus in our keyframing here. So let's go to our last place where we wanna be fully saturated. So I'm gonna say a roundabout here, and you can always adjust it afterwards. So what we can do, we can either come down and right click and add a dynamic keyframe, or we can simply click this little button here, and that will automatically add in a keyframe when we make an adjustment. So I like this a little bit better. So we're gonna go back to our gain here, and we're gonna pull it all the way down to zero. Now we have a saturated looking image. So let's go back to where we want that saturation 
to be out. So I'm going to say, I don't know, we'll say a random bet here. To add the next keyframe in, all we have to do is put this gain back to 100. So we can actually just double click this, and that's going to put a little keyframe here. So now we have our two keyframes down here, and these are actually dynamic keyframes, which means that they are going to change over time, not abruptly. So with our keyframing here, if we were to play this footage back, desaturated, then we're bringing in that saturation. And if you wanted this effect to, let's say, happen sooner, all you have to do is highlight this by clicking this little keyframe here, bring it in, then go back to the start, space again, comes back simply like that. Or you can even move this one down, this one further out. It's completely up to your imagination and you can do whatever you want, but it is really, really simple when it comes to that keyframing. And if we go to our last footage here, we could do the same thing. But for this one, I thought we'd do something a little bit different and I thought we would try and do it using the qualifier. That's right, our arch enemy, the qualifier. So with that qualifier here, let's see if we can make a selection. Let's just make a broad selection. And we have a pretty good selection already. So let's try and clean this up a little bit and see if we can get a good looking selection. I'm actually surprised that this looks as good as it does. Let's take those whites, bring in those areas, the noise. Okay, so this is our selection. If we wanted to, of course, desaturate everything else, what we need to do is make an outside node. So you can either come up to your nodes in your color and go down to nodes and then outside node or simply Alt O if you're on a Windows. Now let's press Shift H, take off our selection, and then come back to our primaries and again desaturate. So if we look at our footage here, we've got a good selection, but it's not a perfect selection. And I would have to say that the magic mask is a lot better. We also have this fingernail showing up because that happens to be the same color as the apple. Now, if I were to do this in the magic mask, I'm sure I'd get a better selection and I could actually just come in and just take that fingernail out. Well, I mean, not in reality, but I could just take that selection out. And of course, look at our tomato here. We have some non-selected areas. In my humble opinion, when it comes to doing tracking, this type of stuff, I would try and go for the magic mask. But let me know in the comments below what you thought of the video and how you would do this effect yourself. Would you actually use DaVinci Resolve, or would you use Fusion or After Effects or anything like that? But I am surprised how good the magic mask worked. I think it looks really good, and we could do lots of kind of crazy stuff here. Could even change all the hue around, go for some kind of autumn look, but that's kind of like screwing up our hands. But anyway, I think it looks really great. Really happy with the results. Thank you again for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see, and have a fantastic day.